Oh gosh, I, I think this is Dr. Romano's house. I'm not sure. I'm a little nervous to go up here, but I really need some help. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, we're here. We're here. We're here. Yes. Oh, hi, Dr. Romano. I hate to disturb you, but... Well, you are, so... Do we need to know anything about protecting groups for the DAT? You do need to know a few things about protecting groups. Why don't I come out and just show you so then I can get rid of you really quick. All right. Thank you, Dr. Romano. Follow me. You have a nice house. If you take a look at what I have here, let's say, for example, we wanted to go from this compound into this. When you look real quickly at this, we're not really doing all that much rearranging of the skeleton. All we're really doing is we're adding on a methyl group and an H. So normally we would just say you could do a simple Grignard reaction on this and you're done. But the problem is the Grignard, besides being the nucleophile, it's also a very powerful base. And what it can do is it can react with the OH group. So the OH group needs to be protected. Now, for the DAT exam, there's two main protecting groups that I think you should know. There are hundreds of protecting groups, maybe even thousands of protecting groups. You don't even want to see some of these books on protecting groups. All we need to know here is two of them. If you look at what I first did is I protected the alcohol group using a chemical called trimethyl chloride. Sometimes in advanced organic chemistry, we just write TMSCL. It's a silicon with three methyls and a chlorine. And all it simply does is it removes the H and the CL, and it puts on the silicon moiety almost like a lock. Once we got this locked in place, the OH group is now protected, and then we simply do the Grignard. We add across the carbonyl group, the methyl group gets put on, water puts on the H, and then finally we're going to remove the protecting group. There's a few ways to remove it. If it's a very simple silicon protecting group, we can just use H3O+, or we can use ammonium fluoride, or this monster, it looks scary, but it's called TBAF. This is actually called tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. Any one of these four would simply knock off the silicon and replace it with an OH to get the final product. Wow. If you look at the second example, this is the second type of protecting group. If you just took a cursory glance at this, you would realize all you need to do is to, re is to reduce the double bond O into an OH group. If you use the reducing agents like NABH4 or lithium aluminum hydride, it would also reduce down the aldehyde group. So clearly the aldehyde group needs to be protected. Well, since an aldehyde is usually more reactive than a ketone, we would use this 1,2-ethane diol as a protecting group, and TSOH would simply be my acid catalyst, and we would protect the aldehyde group and make it into this acetal. Do you have any idea what that acetal sort of reminds you of, or what does that look like to you? It looks like Bart Simpson. That's I love exactly, the Simpson. I call this the Bart Simpson head. Is As Marge you, here somewhere? There's no Marge here today. So just oh. pay close attention. As you can see, it looks just like Bart Simpson's head. That's how you know you got a good protecting group and you put it on perfect. Once you got the Bart Simpson head put on, i.e. the acetal protecting group, then you're on your merry way. You can reduce down the carbonyl group, do your work, and once you're done... You can remove the protecting group by hitting it with a little bit of dilute acid, and that would regenerate the compound that you desire to target. I hope that gives you a good idea of what the world of protecting groups looks like. In the real world, this is very, very important because many times a molecule has many different functional groups, and we need to protect some of them. Sometimes in some synthetic procedures, there's multiple protecting groups. But for your purposes, just this one protecting group should be what you need to know. I hope this helps you and makes you understand the use of a protecting group in organic chemistry. 
Thank you, Dr. Romano. I think I'm going to the beach. Do you think that's a good idea today? I think today? that's a horrible idea. I think you need to do some serious studying. Good day to you. All right. Goodbye.